can you start initialize the spring boot projects so it just everybody i understand everybody knows how can you generate the uh, really standard spring boot application with the spring initializer if i go to the spring initializer the spring initializer to uh, the web service tools you can create the projects like from the spring initializer tools uh, and from with the selecting the different uh, the project uh, building types for this case we are using mavens and language selections java we are using and the version of the of the spring boot application you can put your group artifact id and then so on so forth what i did and even though you have a selection of the java 16 and 16 11 and, and 8 versions after the selecting the all the information what i did already and then you have a some possibility which dependency you need to be gen actuator and actuator is actuate information is a simply inject actuate information it is injected actuate information we need a jpa and jpa in injection we need jpa and then you also need to inject the jdbc uh, uh, post is driver jdbc is a driver jdbc we need a devops uh, uh, devops tools and then you can see the devops tools and then we need also uh, the some <coughs> Has some JB2 and REST, REST API default default REST and repositories you can also do, and then it's 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 it automatically create the, all the dependency, and there is no no micrometer dependency you need to be manually uh, inject when you uh, export the create the projects and uh, unzip the projects export import the project into the Teddy IDE, and then you can manually do do the 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 insert of your dependency into the pom.xml files to the additional dependency injections that's that's what we'll do together so that means you can go to the spring initializer create the projects what the required dependency you need because this is the required required dependency that we need but if you forget it you can later you can add it like this one but it is the good way if you take the selecting versions and then it the version it will really maintain the increase its parent child dependency injections with the proper versioning control system so just just take it maximum what is available here and if it's not available then you can manually import the the dependency into the pom.xml files that that's that can be the the possibility this one so project creations you create the projects is unzip the projects do that to the put in the local directory and after the unzip the project and import the project into the your respective ide then then that is, is no problems so yeah I, I already did the project creations and then i i import the projects and then you see the project is is, is standard structure like it has some java src src main java and src main resources and then it has the src test resource so this is standard uh, how can I say standard standard <coughs> standard uh, java uh, maven project structure as like get also the same project structure this is not more, more to specials so it has a text packet it has a java packet package and it has a resource packet the the class path resource packet this is the most important structure of the maven projects and then, then after the maven project is created it has a pom.xml file that i am here trying to to, to show you so if, if the project if you have no such a dependency injected so you see the base basic standard structure your, your your artifact id group id and version number what version we are creating and then after that we just inject the the open api ui that's why we need it for the for the api documentations and this is the actuator dependency that's we did in the in the dependency uh, search uh, with the projects and this is the new dependencies manually you need to be imported like uh, io micrometers so micrometer is free prometheus and then the core uh, the io micrometer micrometer core dependencies so this is the two two dependency just you simply need for the for the monitoring your microservice applications uh, spring boot applications and this is the micrometer micrometer core and then this is the actuator for creating the default matrices like the health conditions and matrices information from out of your spring boot application so dependency is injected plotted and then put it manually and then and these two dependency and then you see the standard 
just like JPA, that's what we need. Now you have a Lombok dependency, the Postgres driver, and then so on and so forth. And this is the flyway that I said this is the, one of the important part, and that we are using the uh, not hypernet creating the schema database schema. The flyway will create the database uh, schemas as like the version control systems, the database version control system. That's I said I in the previous screencast. I already discussed a bit more detail. How can you um, mm, how can you integrate the different database migration concept, migration script or version control systems for the database migration schema migrations with the flyway and liquid base? That uh, just follow the previous one. How can you do it? With the same same script, the SQL script, uh, but in the liquid base case, there you have a possibility like you can also XML, you can also have a possibility as a, as a JSON format, you can also do it, and, and and for this case, I just put it like simple, very simple, straightforward. I have a, a SQL script for the database migration in the flyway. I just take the simple, very simple, this same script into the liquid base the database migrations, like make life easy. So all the dependencies properly there, the maybe plugging there, and number extension is there. So uh, the pom.xml is completed. When the pom.xml file is completed, then we need to be do here the application.yml file. Then de by default it is coming as application.properties files. Just you can overwrite the application.property file as application.yml files. It's it's up to you how you send it. It's the same thing, but uh, if we found that the EML files is really good structure, do good way to handle the, the configurations. So you see the application.eml files, we just simply manage the manage endpoints, web exposes, expose the includes the Prometheus, the matrices, the health info and matrix information from your microservice application. So you can do more. So you can come and set a list of other things. Maybe you can integrate the beans information, other information metrics, or other sub metrics, or other other monitoring features, or other monitoring metrics information. Just I simply I put it here the uh, basic standard uh, uh, include the expose the metrics as the Prometheus metrics as information and health and metric info and the metric conventions. Then show the show the endpoints health and show the details all age, show the metrics tags and then the, taking the application itself the and the user registration flyway what you like to do that and then here is some 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 plugging and uh, some information about the uh, Swagger UI that's I ended here show you the Swagger UI information how we can configure externally uh, those those meta information even though the description about each of the microservice uh, uh, endpoints or microservice call. So that means say we define here the and then some description files, uh, application.yml files that I can read. Uh, I can set this override this information from external environmental settings or any external configuration files. So you can override what you like to do. Just I, I this is the possibility that I, I try to discuss with you. How can you? really professionally set your configurations and then the if you set the your professional configurations then you can externally override all the information that you need to be changed to deploy the application into the productions into the release or testing environments and it is it is i, I understand that for the beginner it is hard to understand but if you understand one of time one times then it's like it's make your life really really very simple very easy because you understand really properly and you exercise it, you practice it really professional way. And then you, you do not have any problems to your companies when you try to work in the company as, as a professional software developer or DevOps engineers or as a software engineers. So that's follow the channels. I believe it is really help you a really lot. How can you professionally handle the configuration and professionally implement the implementation or developments? So you put it in server information, the, the application server, you can also the, the IP address, you can have override, that's I have already into the other case for it, uh, the placeholder for the Docker, Docker Compose page and Docker Kubernetes based deployments. For this case, I see very simple uh, jar based deployments. I just simply run the application out of the, our IDE. So you have profiles, you can have a profile, application name, it has a database, and uh, the driver information. If you are using MySQL, just to the MySQL driver and everything will be the same as it is. 
true and then it has a database user user admin user user and the password